welcome to a new episode of Melt. I'm Ritvika Gupta shooting from home. Today we'll be in conversation with Scott Goodson, founder and CEO of Strawberry Frog and Chip Walker, head strategy Strawberry Frog. Scott and Chip have co-authored the book Activate Brand Purpose, which shows readers how to transform their brand's purpose into meaningful action by sparking a company-wide cultural movement beginning internally and permeating externally. Strawberry Frog is the first movement marketing agency dedicated to cultural movement marketing. Their clients include Heineken, P&G, Frito-Lay, Google, Mitsubishi, Morgan Stanley, among others. The agency is best known in India for its work on Mahindra's rice. Let's get ready to melt with Scott Goodson and Chip Walker. Hello, Scott. Hello. And hello, Chip. How are you? Hey there, I'm doing great. Thank you. Fantastic. So uh, to start with, Scott, you've just written a book, one of the hundreds of books you keep writing. So tell me, what was the need for a book on movements and purpose now? I think COVID has put a spotlight on the enormity of the problems we're facing uh, in our world. Um, climate change, health, financial devastation, there's a lot of challenges and it's time for companies to tackle these issues, for CEOs of these companies to move from what we call in the US woke CEOs to becoming warrior CEOs to tackle these issues. Because the success of companies in the future, growth, transformation will depend on how well they uh, do what they do, but also tackle these bigger issues. And we've had a, you know, the last few years of a lot of talk and a lot of intent around purpose, but no action, not enough action. And we def we definitely need action right now. Right, Chip. Uh, one of the arguments I've had with purpose, in fact, I think uh, Dave Trot uh, wrote beautifully about it. He said, "How much can you ladder up? You know, can a soap change the world?" And, uh, you know, why, why does soap have to have purpose other than, you know, give you a clean body? Now, a lot of brands are trying to get onto this movement of purpose bandwagon without thinking it through. And they think of it as a tactical exercise or a campaign rather than being true to a purpose. So how would you react to that? Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. There's kind of an epidemic of uh, purpose washing, which I'm sure you've uh, probably encountered before. Uh, and I think our point of view is that your, your purpose has got to come uh, from, from the top of the company. It's got to have leadership that believes in it. And it's got to be activated inside a company and sort of all the way through middle, all the way down to frontline employees first. I think what we see happen when it uh, becomes a marketing campaign, uh, I think some good examples are uh, Pepsi, uh, did that a couple of years ago with a Kendall Jenner ad campaign. You guys may have seen it. Uh, it ran, I think, around the world, um, which uh, it was just an ad campaign of her um, seemingly supporting some kind of a, 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 you know, an equal rights movement, but it had nothing to do that we could tell with Pepsi. Uh, and it didn't seem to be anything the company believed in or coming from uh, the top or that employees were behind. Similarly with uh, Gillette, you know, they got on this whole thing about toxic masculinity in an ad campaign two or three years ago. Again, we had no indication this was something that the company uh, was behind in a big way that their leadership was involved in. And uh, I think what happens is um, uh, consumers, regular people get incredibly cynical. They feel like it's inauthentic and you're just doing this to get some attention. Um, so I, I think it's a, it's a big problem uh, and, uh, you, know, you know, one we try to highlight whenever we can. Right, Scott, how do you think a company should approach it? Let's suppose a company says we need to you know, find a larger purpose than, you know, a pound shillings and pence and just making money. How would you advise the top management of a company or even the board to try and find authentic purpose or an authentic movement? What is the first step they take? Well, I think the first step they take is realizing that in the next two years, when IonQ launches quantum computing, we are going to have a completely different world. And a lot of the companies and, that exist are overnight going to be 
completely disintermediated by other types of companies. I mean, just as a simple example, there's a small startup uh, recently that came out to try to completely reinvent the healthcare space. That company is called Amazon. They just launched a whole new approach to healthcare. So we're going to see such disruption over the next couple of years is going to keep our heads spinning. So if I was a CEO of a company, I would focus less on profits and I would start focusing on solving big world issues. The world doesn't need more stuff. The world needs people to help solve some of these challenges. So the starting point is to first of all, understand what is the culture of the organization? What is in the earth underneath the organization? And then secondly, what is, an, what is a challenge out there that is relevant to that culture that can motivate the employees and, and tie those two things together? Because the, the reality is you can grow your company, you can transform your company and solve big issues. In fact, it is in your best interest to do so. So with all due respect to Dave Trott, who I love and I read, you know, his work is wonderful. I do believe that it's in the interests of a soap company to ensure that they don't create toxic, toxic waste that limits the lifespan of people. I do think it's in the interest of companies to ensure that people live longer, healthier lives because then they will buy more of your stuff. So if you kill people faster, it's not in your interest. Right. So uh, both Chip and Scott, uh, I'm addressing the two of you. You can decide who would answer. The advice you give now is long-term advice. It's not something, not like an ad campaign where you know, we speak in April and we launch it in October and then we forget about it in January. You are talking about some fundamental change to the organization. You are also talking about don't look at profits. How do you balance shareholder needs and running the company and keeping your own job as a CEO? Well, I'm going to just say a couple of words and I'll pass it to Chip. First of all, I didn't say that you should not look at profits. In fact, what I've said is the next trillionaire is going to be someone who tackles the climate change issue. So profit is going to come from solving big issues. The issue is you can't just focus on making money. You need to focus on solving these issues. I mean, climate change is the number one issue we're dealing with. I mean, the zoo zoological diseases that are changing our world, like COVID-19, like SARS, is coming from cl climate change. These are related to the destruction of our world. Companies have been on a path of destruction. There's a wonderful book by Rebecca Henderson, who's a professor at the Harvard Business School called Reimagining Capitalism. And she did a great job of describing the challenges we face and the role that companies need to play in helping to solve those issues. Um, so to me, that, they're, they're absolutely um, linked. So I'll pass that to Chip next. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a great question, and and you're right. We do talk a lot about sort of long termism in terms of purpose and and all the foundational work you need to do to activate your purpose. But uh, at the same time, our book is really about activating purpose and doing it right now. So we got both a long term view and a short term view, and that is where our whole movement concept work where uh, comes in. So a movement is about uh, getting people to want to join in and do something around a shared purpose right now. Uh, that could be inside your company. Uh, it could be outside your company. But the whole notion is that we are driving people towards action, you know, finding a shared dissatisfaction out in the world, sort of what Scott was talking about. What, what is the big problem you're, you're trying to tackle that your either employees and or your customers are, are on board about? Uh, and creating a campaign to, to bring that to life and get people on board. So I think what we've seen is when you activate purpose via a movement, not only are you moving towards a long-term goal, uh, purpose-wise, but you can actually can create a campaign in the market that gets results now or, or, or a campaign inside your company. And this is something, I mean, we're not just making this up. It, in fact, India played an important role in our proving out this hypothesis. We, we started working with Anand Mahindra and the leadership, Pawan Gwenka, and the senior leadership of Mahindra 12 years ago on exactly this, the idea of developing a purpose 
and then activating it with a movement. Anand was the, one of the first leaders in the world to embrace this, this, this really innovative way of thinking. We created the RISE movement together with him and his leadership team, which you know, I'm proud to say is now you know, over a decade uh, you know, with energy and a steely resolve and, and still changing the culture of the organization. We then did it for Emirates globally. And today we're working with Walmart and you know, Truist, one of the largest banks in, in the United States and other organizations. So you know, it is definitely something that is long-term because it's not a marketing campaign. It's putting purpose at the core of your strategy, your hiring, your, your, your employee well-being, product innovation, the way that you think about your customers and improving their uh, quality of life, as well as other stakeholders, like the community within which the organization operates. So there's a lot of, you know, it's a whole new world um, out there. And, and one other comment I'll make is it is, it's changed a lot since we launched, you know, the Rise Movement with Mahindra. The Rise Movement was launched at a time when leaders were still, you know, driving mandates within organizations from the top down. It's a much more peer-to-peer -peer world today. So this idea of activating a purpose through a movement is designed for a world where people are less inclined to respond to mandates from the top and more inclined to want to be part of something because it's in the interest of all of us. We see this as a benefit to all of us who work here and we want to build it together. This is the new world we're living in. And this is why uh, our approach we believe and is proven to make sense. Scott, uh, tell me something like, you know, you've given the examples of saying uh, Mahindra and you know, uh, Walmart and Emirates, they're all huge companies. Now, India as a business, it, is a, as an economy, has a lot of small companies, you know, with 100 crores, 200 crores, 500 crores turnover. Are companies of that size, can they actually embrace a movement and still do well with it? Does it have to solve world problems or can it solve, for example, a problem in my neighborhood? I think if you're going to do a startup today, why do a startup that just makes money when you can actually solve bigger issues? And I think it's a sustainable idea not to launch a business, but rather to launch a movement. I would argue that gives you significantly more momentum. It gives you buy-in from people you wish to hire, the best talent. It allows you to have a more meaningful story to investors. I'll give you a case in point. Uh, there's a company that I've been involved with called Courbet, which is C-O-U-R-B-E-T. Dot com. It is a new uh, startup uh, that makes um, man-made diamond jewelry with recycled gold. So think of it as an, the world's first ethical luxury diamond jewelry brand. Uh, it was launched in the Place Vendôme in Paris, which is of course the, the center of world luxury. Um, it has become a rocket ship. It has, um, it is, has a purpose, which is you can't be beautiful unless you're doing good. And it, it is very um, relevant to a new generation of, of jewelry buyers who don't want blood diamonds, uh, who do, you know, obviously want what diamonds represent in jewelry and so forth, but they want it in a way that doesn't, let's say, just further deepen the policies of the last decades or the last hundred years. I mean, something's got to change. So if you're gonna do a startup, you know, the example of Courbet, I think is a great one. And what about existing businesses, which are uh, not of a, the size of a Mahindra, but still is okay, say, uh, you know, $100 million, $500 million business, a whole business size. What do they, can they embrace a moment? An existing business, which is 30 years old, 40 years old, making biscuits. For example, so so absolutely they can. And to your earlier question, um, 
if you're a smaller company, do you have to feel like you're changing the entire planet if you're only, you know, 50 or 100 people? Is that is that realistic? Can it be about even just uh, improving your community? And, and the, the answer is yes. Yes, it can be. Having said that, though, I, I think we, uh, even for small companies, we encourage them to sort of aim big uh, just because that's where consumers are and that we feel like there are so many problems in the world. One of the companies we uh, profile in our book is called Bowl & Branch. Uh, they make um, upscale kind of luxury sheets. I think they're between 50 and 100 employees. Uh, they've been around for a few years, so they're not a startup. Um, but what they've done uh, to kind of start a movement was really, uh, interestingly, it's kind of around supply chain. Uh, they discovered that in the making of textiles and particularly for bedding that makes it to the United States, if you look at the supply chain, it's just ridden with horrible things you wouldn't want to know about your textile in terms of the treatment of employees, uh, where they're sourced from. Uh, and they made it their mission in how they did sourcing to, to make it more ethical uh, and to uh, sort of make a much cleaner product uh, and sort of define luxury in bedding that way. It's been a huge success for them. As I said, they're, they're a few hundred million dollars in sales. As I said, I think they're only maybe around a, a hundred employees, but they're a small company that's found a way to make a difference, not only like in somebody's everyday life, but, but a little bit, at least in the, on the planet. So, so answer is yes. I think smaller companies can absolutely spark a movement. Yeah. I think the, I think the framework that leaders um, can apply is, Yes, we have a business that is 10 years old or 15 years old and we make biscuits. But if we apply this thinking, where does that take us in the next five years? What kind of engagement do we have with our existing, you know, with our, our employees, with our partners, with our customers? But beyond that, what, what other types of relationships can we form? Because keep in mind that this framework that Chip and I are advocating is also a platform for collaboration and bringing together companies that otherwise would be competing with each other and bringing companies to the forefront on an on a international basis. It's, a, it's really a strategy for growth because it aligns the interests of different and past competitors with an idea that is relevant to a broader audience. So, I mean, it, it is a it is a growth strategy. It's not just a mark. It's not a marketing strategy. Right. It's a business strategy. Now, let me provoke uh, both of you. Let's suppose uh, you had to recommend uh, a movement to the board of Omnicom or WPP or Publicity. What would you say? Let's suppose, as a brand, they want your advice on what they should do. Well, I wouldn't give it to them because we're competing with them. So I think, you know, we, you know, but in the interest, I say to, to my earlier point about um, collaboration, I think that the marketing community has made some excellent strides in this space. So creative people, strategic marketing people, I think are recognizing the need for diversity and women having roles in companies and companies actually doing good. We see that you know, every year in Can, the last few years, I should say, um, organizations that break the glass ceiling, um, companies that are driving positive change are being heralded and put on platforms. So clearly there's a, a lot more um, awareness and acknowledgement there, but I think there's a long way to go. Okay, and finally, uh, either of you can answer this. Uh, if you if you were allowed to ship copies of your book to five Indians, who the, who would those five be? I mean, I I think any CEO or leader who really is sitting there thinking, how do I transform my company and make it relevant for the next ten years at least, um, would be the right one. Whether it's a startup or an existing large company. I mean, would I like to work with, you know, Mr. Ambani at uh, Reliance? Of course. I, I'm excited about the idea of working with Anish Shah, who's the new CEO of Mahindra. He's wonderful. Um, I think, I mean, there's uh, Mr. Sikat Infosys. I think any large organization that has its sights on the future 
wants to make an impact and grow their business, those are the individuals that Chip and I and our organization would really love to work with. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Scott, and thank you so much, Chip. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. And hope to see you in India soon. Yeah, we, we are thinking of you. We hope that things turn around for you and India with uh, COVID. And we're, we're thinking of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that was the conversation with Scott Goodson and Chip Walker, where they share the importance of having a larger brand purpose. He is now presenting the Mel Cheat Sheet. Today, it is more sustainable to launch a movement than a business. Profit is going to come from solving big issues. Companies need more warrior CEOs than woke CEOs. The marketing industry is acknowledging the need for diversity. With that, let's move on to this week's creative picks. We have an ad today by Procter & Gamble called Widen the Screen that portrays stereotypes about the black community only to switch it with the reality of the very people leading happy and loving lives. The ad breaks a lot of stereotypes and urges viewers to see the full picture. Widen the Screen is an initiative designed to also expand the development of black creators in film, television and advertising. The film encourages people to confront internalized prejudice. Take a look. yourself why these are the black stories we've been shown a narrow view that limits our understanding but there's so much more to see Let's widen the screen so we can widen our view. And that's a wrap on this episode of Melt. Do follow us on social media. Our handle is ready to melt. And stay updated with all that's happening in the world of advertising and marketing with our daily Melt update on our website readytomelt.com. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Goodbye. <laughs>